G'day. Tonight I'm going to be doing some science for a change instead of making pretty pictures. So join me as I try and take an image with the New Horizons satellite at the same time to do a stellar parallax measurement. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. Did you know that wearing a lab coat and stupid glasses actually makes you perform better on tests? It actually makes us smarter. This is an effect called embodied cognition and it is real. Why does this work? Because humans are stupid and that is how our brain responds to this idea that we feel like we're doing science. And that's why this video in particular is sponsored by High Point Scientific. High Point Scientific are an American retailer of astronomy equipment. They support their products 100% before, during and after the purchase and they have a price match guarantee. They're great guys and I've dealt with them before. So if you wanna buy some new gear, they're the people to hit up and feel totally smart and brainy while you do it because the company's called High Point Scientific. So it just makes you feel cool. Yes, science! So. New Horizons is way out in the Kuiper Belt. It's taken a beautiful photo of Pluto for us and it's out there in the far reaches of space. Not quite as far as voyages, but it's out there. And that means that if we take a photo from the Earth and a photo from out there at the same time of a distant object, we get a much more accurate stellar parallax reading. It allows us to calculate with trigonometry, with basic trigonometry, the distance to an object, especially if that object is close to us. So what NASA wants to do is to take an image from Earth and from New Horizons of Proxima Centauri, one of the closest other stars to our star, the Sun. Now this is about four light years away, so pretty close in terms of astronomical values. Four light years means if you could communicate with a laser pointer using Morse code, it would take four years for the message to get there and another four years to get back. That's an eight year sort of conversation, I guess. Now in 2020 because of Coronavirus! a lot of the ground observatories are shut down so NASA has reached out to the backyarders like me. I saw the caller and I just kept my eye on the date because I wasn't sure if it was going to be clear or if things would happen but it's happening in about one hour's time so I've set up the telescope ready to take an image. Let me show you how this all works. So the first step was to open up the observatory. I've got all green lights on my weather reading, so everything is looking good. The next step was to use the framing and mosaic wizard to basically find out where Proxima Centauri was. I got it down to this region here, somewhere in the middle. Proxima Centauri is a really small star though, so it's really hard to find. So that's the star field. That's a three minute exposure, but we don't actually want a three minute exposure, especially not for science. Uh, we're trying to measure a moment in time. Uh, so this measurement relies on the fact that we're taking this image at the same time as the New Horizons spacecraft. Uh, so if we make it three minutes, then where is the moment? Is it at the beginning of the exposure or the end of the exposure or the middle of the exposure? Um, a lot of solving programs will use any of those combinations. So what I'm gonna do is just a 10 or even 20 second exposure. All the time and location data will be stored in the FITS header. And that's what we want, a FIT file. And there is the FIT file as it came down. Nothing really distinct about it. I don't know what I'm looking at. I certainly couldn't tell you which one of these stars is Proxima Centauri. But I do have data and you know what that means? It means it's time for a nice 2015 cab sav. So the first thing you have to do is solve this image or reduce the image. Uh, so for that I'm going to use PixInsight and I'm going to go into Image Analysis and Image Solver. So in the Image Plate Solver script or the Image Solver script you need to add your file in here and then search for the target, in this case Proxima Centauri. And that will make sure that it's uh, doing that solve based on that rough location. The first time you do this it'll download heaps of catalogs but once those catalogs are done they'll be on your machine and then it just whips through. Now that's all done, so it's created a WCS file. We open that WCS file and just auto stretch it so we can see. Uh, there's another tool, now this is solved, so not only does it have the metadata of our time and location and when we took the image, uh, it also now has the exact location so it knows exactly where it is in space as well. So we're gonna go into the render annotate image 
And this gives us a whole bunch of options for things we can add, constellation lines, named stars, Messier, NGC, and what we want here is the Tyco 2 catalog. It's already got all of this metadata from that file, that WCS file. And so we're just gonna hit okay and it should annotate the image for us. Now it took me a while to find Proxima Centauri because it didn't actually add Proxima Centauri to this list and it didn't add its TYC designation either. But looking at the map from NASA on the New Horizons website, and I knew that the nearest other TYC star was this 90101860. I know it's near nearby there. So I'm pretty sure it's this one here. It's one of the bigger ones in the star field. And that is Proxima Centauri, the closest star to our own. And this is what New Horizons wants at precisely 1300 hours UTC time. So I know that that's in an hour's time, so I'm ready to go. Well, it's future Dylan here, and my God, this lab coat is hot, really hot. But first thing this morning, I um, contacted my educational contacts through NASA. Um, some people thought that this was just a uh, sort of citizen uh, public engagement thing. It's not, they actually do need this data. And so they asked me for the additional information, stuff like my location, length of exposures, the equipment used. A lot of that's already in the FITS header, uh, but they just wanted that for the image submission process. So I've sent that through. We also had some additional observers uh, with Terry Lovejoy in Queensland and Greg Bock from the BOSS Observation Group. Uh, so collectively we've all got the data that they needed and hopefully We'll have a good measurement in the future. Now it will take a month for the data to come back from New Horizons. That's how far away this thing is. But hopefully we've contributed. Uh, now tonight the same thing is happening with Wolf 359. Uh, and this is one that you can get from the Northern Hemisphere. So I don't know if this video will get in, out in time. But I've been sharing this information on Twitter. If you follow me there then you'll know that this is happening. And watch me do it in real time. But that's it. I hope you enjoyed the science. And remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Yes, yeah, science!